Hello, world singers! My name is Brooke. And I'm Tyler. And this is Cosmere Cosmere Conversations. Conversations. Welcome back to a new year, everyone. It is our first episode of 2022. We took a week off and uh, I missed you guys. It has left a gaping hole in my heart. (laughs) Now, we only took a week off for our patrons over on Patreon. Last year was our first year on Patreon. It has been great. You can join us on Patreon. You can also join us on all of the different social media, but that's not what you're here for. You're here for the hashtag all spoilers all the time. We are looking at something that once again has like gone under the radar for yeah. many a years. Yeah, well, okay, because we do not own any of the paperback or <laughs> hardcover versions of these books. We only own either digital or leather-bound versions. And so these bookback blurbs, honestly, I have never read. And so we have missed a prime example of Brandon Sanderson's commitment to the bit. This man (laughs) goes all in at all times. There's always another secret, and he is just layering them in bit by bit. Brooke, can you tell the fans specifically what we're talking about here with these book back blurbs and the mystery that has been unveiled, maybe just to us, but now we are also (laughs) unveiling it to you. Yeah, I'm sure some of our listeners know all about this. As with most books, on the back cover of the paperback and hardcover versions of Stormlight Archive, there is a, you know, short blurb about uh, what the book is about, giving you a little taste of the world inside the book, you know, to try to entice you to read it. And for Brandon Sanderson and the Stormlight Archive, the blurbs on the backs of these books are written in world by a sleepless, per word of Brandon. Now, the sleepless, obviously one of the entities, beings, be they singular or plural, we know there are many, but there are types and some of them are theys. There's a lot of going on with the sleepless that we don't know. And the fact that in front of our own eyes or on front of the back of our books (laughs) have been the words of the sleepless this whole time is another one of the things that I love. So we are going to go over all of the different book back blurbs. In this episode, we will throw out some cool theories and just generally talk about how amazing the sleepless are. But first, let's start off 2022 with some listener feedback. Yes, we heard from listener Rob. He had a couple of interesting thoughts that I thought we would bring to the mic. The first one is, quote, the fact that there are only nine unmade and the characters' explanations always made me think that something weird was going on. Then you had Raboniel trying to unmake the sibling. I started wondering if Honor and Cultivation actually had 10 children. And the sibling has avoided being unmade by becoming bonded, where others may have passed up or were unmade before having the opportunity. End quote. This has always been a big question of mine. What are the made? What are the unmade? And then with the introduction and more knowledge about the sibling, clearly I've gone off the deep end a couple of times (laughs) discussing the different possibilities for what is the sibling? What is honor and cultivation's relationship? Was there an interloper as we saw and theorized about with the moon child where there was something untowards going on that maybe caused a unmaking of the shard relationship that did exist? Lots of possible theorizing, but I definitely believe that the Nine Unmade is a example of how 10 is not necessarily the end-all be-all in Risharian lore. I like the idea that the sibling could round out that unholy nine number. That just always bothers me. And that does also solve my question about why they are the sibling instead of the child. I think this is a really interesting thought if perhaps 
as Rob is saying, all of the unmade were originally children, and maybe they all also inhabited the 10 silver kingdoms, I think they're called, the like ancient Mm -hmm. cities of Rashar. Like maybe that was the thing. And they had these 10 like wonderful, magical, fabrial cities. Or alternatively, the sibling is the only one who is a fabrial and that is what protected them from being unmade. But I don't know. I have often talked about the idea of the OG and the copies. And we see this most apparently with the different version of blades on Mm -hmm. Rishar, the honor blades and so on and so forth. But I think that the idea that maybe the sibling is the not only one, but they are the original version. And they're the oldest child, but not the only child. Exactly. And the unmade are perhaps attempts to recreate something that could only be done once, only be done once in quotes, but that only worked once with the sibling and then everything else is a facsimile of a sham, Mm. I believe is a... Maybe. So great things that Rob is pointing out. Mm -hmm. Let's go to point number two from Rob. Says, quote, in episode 74, I got to a part where you're talking about what or who is Hoyt and on a reread of Mistborn's Secret History and the Stormlight Archive, I noticed Hoyd refers to Kelsier as an idea and remembered when he was talking to either Kaladin or Shallan that he states, I started out as an idea. I think there is a lot of room in which this could go, but I believe Hoyd, as we know him now, is what Kelsier is attempting to become. Also, is it possible he started as the idea of a Dawn Shard and his first oath or the oath of that Dawn Shard was... I will be where I am needed, end quote. So many interesting things in that thought. First, I love the connection there between what Hoyt is now and what Kelsier might be trying to become. He already sort of started down that path in the first uh, Mistborn series with his whole like, heroism, you know, dying and martyrdom and becoming an idea around which the Ska could rally and revolt. And then in coming back and assuming the title of Lord Ruler, which has also become an idea, he's assuming that personality, that sort of grandiose sense of a person as well. It is so important to remember, especially as we learn more about these type two invested entities, that there's a lot of funny business going on with characters like Kelsier Thydekar. And maybe that same funny business is going on with Hoyd as well. We've previously joked that Hoyd's line about starting out as an idea is a meta reference to the fact that it was the first character Brandon thought of as a, you know, traveler going through all of the different stories that he would end up turning into the Cosmere. But I do like the idea of everything that we are seeing has kind of been seen before in a different shape or form. Mm -hmm. And the past may not be exactly the same, but it does rhyme. And so what Hoyt does and what Hoyt is has the potential to then influence people like Kelsier to become like him and kind of start over a cycle or a new wheel. A new turning of the wheel. A new turning of the wheel. I think all are possible things and all are really fun things to think about and theorize. And we will always be up for more Hoyt theory. So if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or theories, (laughs) you can find us on all of your social medias. Hit us up now, Brooke. Let's dive deep into the back of the books that we love so much and get some information on the sleepless. Let's start with a little word of Brandon about why these are constructed this way and what exactly they are. Would you like to be Brandon Sanderson or The Questioner? I shall be Brandon. We have the same initials. Oh, that is true. Just BS, BS. You guys are so close. You're basically friends. Thanks, friend of the pond. Pretty much the same person. So just me, Brandon, Britney Spears, Brooke Shields. Wow. I had no idea I was in such high company. JK, of course I did. I will play Corwin of Amber, which is 
Not Brandon Sanderson, but it's a really good name. Strong username. Here we go. Quote, so one of the things I really like about this is that in the Ars Arcanum and the blurb on the back of the dust jacket, they're not just Brandon Sanderson explaining the magic system or Brandon Sanderson summarizing the book for casual pursuing. They're written in world by characters in the world. And I was wondering if you could tell us or give us a hint as to who wrote the dust jacket. I can tell you it's not the same person as who's writing the Ars Arcanum, and neither of those are Hoyd. How about that? That gives you something. I had to fight to get in-world text on the back cover. I personally really don't like summary blurbs. Those summary blurbs are either bland or they spoil too much and they really get on my nerves. They're marketing copy, not author copy. And so I fought and I fought and I fought. So I'm glad you appreciate that. I intend to keep doing that, but Yes, they're being written in world by a group of people on Rashar, end quote. That is a pretty early word of Brandon. That's like 2014 or something. And then in the last couple of years, he has come out to confirm that they are being written by a group of, or he's just said they're written by the sleepless. It's very unclear whether these are all written by the same sleepless entity or if they are being written by different members within the sleepless category. So I think this sets up a lot of potential for back and forth, but what I want to do is read some of these blurbs because I think most people are probably going to be unfamiliar with them or lightly familiar with them and I want yeah. to analyze them in a little I bit mean, more depth. Any of the digital readers, audiobook readers, like we don't get exposed to these, so they might be brand new to a lot of people. And they're just great writing, honestly. Like, they're very poetic and evocative. I find the idea that an author has to fight so hard to include things that he wants on his book to be very interesting, but a conversation for a different type of podcast. We here at Cosmere Conversations are just going to give you the goods right from the text itself. Let's start off with The Way of Kings. On the we back will begin of... at the beginning. Ah, yes. Excellent. On the back of... The book, it says this, quote, I long for the days before the last desolation, the age before the heralds abandoned us and the night's radiant turned against us, a time when there was still magic in the world and honor in the hearts of men. The world became ours and we lost it. Nothing, it appears, is more challenging to the souls of men than victory itself, end quote. Super interesting already. The thing that starts to come up here and that I found just comes up over and over again over the course of these blurbs is trying to define the pronouns that are used because it says here the world became ours like who who's ours does that mean just the sleepless because it's being written by the sleepless does it mean like the whole alliance that was opposed to odium it's very unclear who ours is referring to because then it also references the souls of men and sleepless i feel like would not define themselves as men i'm assuming that is just meaning humans it really is a kind of circular logic or, or a way of playing with words that mm -hmm. i don't quite grasp who is the talker and what are they talking about and this is probably why, you know, English teachers everywhere. I was going to so say, we mean our grammarians. Exactly. Because it is important when you want to create clarity. And when you're someone like Brandon and what he's trying to do here, you want to kind of Ambiguity. avoid Ambiguity. Yeah, exactly. And I think that this question of the world becoming ours, let's say he's talking about the sleepless, ours meaning the sleepless, and we lost it. Who yeah, did they lose like it to? The they lo lost it to men? Lost it. Yeah, I would assume that if that's the case, then they lost it to the humans mm -hmm. because humans presumably won the last desolation and we're like, sweet, we're free. We can conquer everything now, <laughs> basically. And then, uh, you know, did the conquering thing and like scoured Amia. Okay, so we're a couple of lines in and my mind is already blown. <laughs> Let's continue down this path of mind-destroying chaos. Quote, or was that victory an illusion all along? Did our enemies realize that the harder they fought, the stronger we resisted? Perhaps they saw that the heat and the hammer only make for a better grade of sword, but ignore the steel long enough and it will eventually rust away. 
There are four whom we watch. The first is the surgeon, forced to put aside healing to become a soldier in the most brutal war of our time. The second is the assassin, a murderer who weeps as he kills. The third is the liar, a young woman who wears a scholar's mantle over the heart of a thief. The last is the high prince, a warlord whose eyes have opened to the past as his thirst for battle wanes, end quote. So right there we have the introduction to our main characters, mm-hmm. Dalinar, the warlord, Shallan, obviously the liar, Seth, the assassin, and Kaladin, the surgeon-turned-soldier. We have this concept, though, of the sleepless watching them, mm-hmm. and then all— And watching, like, just these four, right? There are four whom we watch— That's a really good point. You know, why not some of the other characters that we have been introduced and are badass? What about Yasna? Why are they avoiding looking at Yasna or (laughs) Navani or any of the other seemingly important players on this world? Why these four specifically? If by the time that we get to Rhythm of War, it has kind of become a little bit more clear why they would be watching these four it certainly wasn't necessarily clear at no, way of it kings. like gets even more murky mm-hmm. actually as we'll see as we go through these we start with these four and they seem to be very important because let's continue quote the world can change surge binding and shard wielding can return the magics of ancient days can become ours again these four people are key one of them may redeem us and one of them will destroy us, end quote. So it's like very strong, strongly worded to emphasize that these four, only the four that are mentioned in this book back blurb from The Way of Kings, which is the first book, and this group of four is not mentioned again together in any of the other book back blurbs. These four and only these four are key. One of these four may redeem us. And one of these four will destroy us. Once again, who is us? Who is us? The magics will become, quote, ours again. Us will be redeemed. Us will be destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Like, who, who, who is this? And so my, if we're following my logic from the beginning, that when they are using the plural, they're talking about the sleepless. That would mean that the magic was once theirs and they lost it and it's going to become ours again. Right. And like, what do humans have to do with the sleepless getting surges and shard wielding? Like, why would that be affecting them? There is a weird back and forth of this is complete, absolute speculation, but I just want to introduce it early because it's eating away at my brain. Okay. And that is that there is a cognitive realm relationship for some reason between the sleepless and the humans or like humans just broke something fundamental about investiture on rashar maybe Mm. and so like the source is tainted so the sleepless also can't access the source that is like the thing that makes the most sense to me. Interesting. What if the sleepless are the ashen bacteria that used to give the humans their powers, (laughs) but they were brought over to Rashar when their power making became inert, and so now they don't have power to give anymore. Mm. So they're just a bacteria that's sitting on a planet that they can't do anything about. You just want to talk about bacteria I really badly want to talk about bacteria. I know. Okay, so the sleepless are bacteria. Everyone has now decided- Just kidding. You can all have your theories, but I think we should maybe keep that in mind. There's something weird going on. And if you were trying to write as a bacteria, how would you, like a sentient, intelligent bacteria, how would you go about that? They might have something in common with the sleepless. Just throwing that out there. I'm just saying. Okay. Putting the sleepless aside, obviously, like the most important question here is who is the redeemer and who is the destroyer out of these four? Let's go with, again, the most obvious. I'll say it, and then you can refute it. Okay, okay. Dalinar is the destroyer, and Kaladin is the redeemer. Not where I thought you were going to go. Oh, interesting. Bold. Okay, what were you thinking as the most obvious? I would put Dalinar as the redeemer, particularly since it says 
may redeem. Like, it's possible, but it's not for sure. Mm -hmm. And Dalinar going into this battle that we're about to see in book five, I feel like just fits that perfectly. He may redeem Rashar. He may win and, like, make everything great. But we've talked a lot about the possibility that he may become Odium's vengeful ambassador to the Cosmere. So I'm betting on that one. That's that's my bet. I'm going Dalinar is the destroyer. He is going to have this epic journey from Genghis Khan like conqueror. You think that yeah, his redeemed. character has been redeemed only to fall as far as he can fall? Yes, absolutely. To the point when he's no longer Dalinar, like Dalinar will die and then he will mm. be replaced he will by He'll be an avatar of Odium. Exactly, basically. And that's I think how we will think of him going forward, not as a character who can be redeemed Mm. or do anything else. So that would just set him up as just, he's the destroyer. He was the destroyer. He will be the destroyer. I would say that's a good (laughs) You're like dust to dust. Yes. (laughs) Kaladin as the redeemer is my guess. What was yours? I don't know, honestly. I think that... Hmm. Yeah, I feel like any of them honestly could be a redeemer. The strength of the declaration will destroy. I struggle with because I feel like none of the four of them seem to be going down a definite, like terrible, destructive path. Oh, I've got a theory, though. Okay, because there is one of them who is wielding a thing that only wants to destroy. Oh, Zeth? Zeth will destroy because he will lose because, control of because Nightblood. Because he has Nightblood. Yes. And then <laughs> you can definitely guarantee that Nightblood exactly. will destroy. <laughs> that's literally his reason for being. So, okay. That's good. I really like the idea of Zeth as a redeemer coming from this like more ancient culture of the Shin. Mm-hmm. You know... Ending but, in Shinovar, seemingly, you know, book five, them going to Shinovar yeah, makes a lot of sense. That yeah. I also think he is at a point when he was put on ice a little bit mm-hmm. during book four while we were following Navani and Kaladin and the people of the tower. Mm-hmm. And then only to be super important in getting Nightblood to destroy Odium and set up Terravodium. So I could definitely see a hard swing back to Zeth in book five and setting him up to be more of the redeemer. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And this is only book one. There's been so many questions from this just in the first blurb. Yeah. Do you want to go on to the next one? Uh, Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Words of Radiance, book back blurb. Let's do it. Quote, the ancient oaths have at last been spoken. The spren return. Men seek that which was lost. I fear the struggle will destroy them. It is the nature of the magic. A broken soul has cracks into which something else can be fit. Surge bindings. The powers of creation themselves. They can brace a broken soul, but they can also widen its fissures. End quote. So ominous. That is really setting up a hard divide, which I didn't fully comprehend until later this idea of the spren fitting in Mm -hmm. where the cracks of the broken soul Mm -hmm. the spirit web obviously being broken and then re-knit with the spren but that weakness is first and foremost a weakness and it can be strengthened by the spren bond but they they the sleepless here are also saying it can be widened yeah like like it can make it even worse freezing over and over thawing out and widening each time to only destroy really whatever. But let's just go with the roads all around the country. Yeah. So I have not seen that interpretation of the Nahal Bond and Surge Bindings anywhere else in Stormlight Archive. This is the first time I've like really considered that Nahal Bond as like maybe not being a good thing. So that was a revelation to me. I feel so disillusioned. It certainly is a different type of, you know, coming into book two, we're pretty dang excited about the Spren Bond. We're like, everybody get a Spren Bond. This is going to be amazing. (laughs) But I definitely think that with the more that we've learned 
with the fused and the heralds and even someone like Kelsey or Thydekar, the potential for insanity is really high among some of these characters when they are, you know, utilizing magic too much. Even something like Savantism on Scadrial is an example of the fissures kind of widening through a great magical mm. power. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I think that this makes me think of surge binding and then hell bond more like hemallergy mm, where definitely. you are really like tacking something onto the spirit web sort of unnaturally versus um you know a misborn or a misting who is just born with their spirit web like that and so that also changes my feelings about surge binding <laughs> I definitely think that we need to think of the more natural version as the singer relationship, the gem heart relationship. Mm, that's mm. what was on Rashar before the humans oh, came. that's a great point. And when the humans came, they had a hack of some type, but yeah. it's more like hemallergy when the spren is piercing into their right. gaps in their spirit. High web. risk, but higher reward. Exactly. But the more natural type would be what we see on Rashar with their creatures. I think and they're totally right. They're just born that way. They're made to have this little symbiotic relationship, but they're not like totally dependent on each other. Man, surge binding is heme allergy, guys. R.I.P. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> I'm so we sad. We all hate surge binding now. <laughs> I think this is good to keep in mind, though, especially going into book five, when we, there's going to be a lot of role reversals. There's going to be a lot of ups that become downs and downs that become ups. And there's so much to learn about the the singers, the way that their relationship works, the way that their bond with Spren is both the same and different, how a gem heart and Knight's Radiant singer can operate with like both of those mm -hmm. things going on simultaneously pulling from two different sources of investiture in something like void light or from stormlight we have other characters now who can pull from even more sources so i think that these are all fun questions that a brandon was dealing with the whole time and b yeah. the sleepless have the deep knowledge of that is missing in so yeah. much of the other people's mm -hmm. own background or their own histories let's continue on would you read the next part quote the wind runner lost in a shattered land balanced upon the boundary between vengeance and honor the light weaver slowly being consumed by her past searching for the lie that she must become the bondsmith born in blood and death striving to rebuild what was destroyed the explorer straddling the fates of two peoples forced to choose between slow death and a terrible betrayal of all she believes it is past time for them to awaken for the everstorm looms and the assassin has arrived end quote another rush of our characters let's do them all one more time we have the windrunner kaladin the light weaver shallan definitely dalinar and this time eshenai with an honorable mention to Zeth at the very end there. This is interesting to me because, A, we've broken out from the four by including Eshenai. Mm -hmm. And the first one that, outside the four, I wouldn't have picked Eshenai. As I said a moment <laughs> yeah, ago, I yeah, picked Yasna. Yeah. I was like, why not Yasna? Uh, Honestly, like for a moment, I was like, the Explorer, who is that again? I like remembered Venli's name, but I had to like search for a minute to be like, oh, Eshenai, of course. Interesting to note that at the time of Words of Radiance, book four was actually planned to be Eshenai's book. Yes. And it became Venli's book for yes. world building point, and actually. storytelling purposes. So it could have been a plan that basically the role of Venli was going to be Eshenai, mm -hmm. but Brandon reworked it mm -hmm. so that they were sisters instead. Yeah. That's a great call. Love it. I like the idea, though, that the weaknesses that we were just talking about in the first paragraph here are put on display mm -hmm. and called out and you could uh, very much imagine i think we've seen in great detail shallan's conflict displayed and how her spirit web her broken soul could be fissuring 
with all of the different spren bonds that sh she's had mm. more than other people. Yeah. And we have then Kaladin, who is shown it, but in a different way, where I feel like we always miss the fact that Shalon and Kaladin are having mirrored stories throughout everything. I find this very interesting, this concept of like, who is breaking from the bond and who is growing from the mm, bond? Yeah. Is there someone that we are missing that we think they're going through a lot of personal growth and having the arc of their character over a long period of time growing up, but in fact, they are headed towards disaster? I don't know, but the sleepless seem to know a lot and they're keeping their eyes on everything. Let's go on to Oathbringer, book back blurb. Quote, a new storm has come. Ash and red lightning sweep the land, awakening our ancient enemies. The unmade, shadows of the enemy's soul, stir while the eyes of men open. This war is not, and never was, what they thought it to be. We may soon hold surges again, for radiance has returned to some and shines towards others. End quote. Okay, so again, who is we? Who, who is holding about? the surges? <laughs> okay, so it's... A, our ancient enemies have awoken. Right, right. Like, does that mean they are specifically the enemies of the sleepless? There's some, like, ancient rivalry here. So ancient that we don't know about it? Was this, like, the fight that was happening before the humans showed up? Maybe. And we, they, the humans kind of were, like, interlopers in the fight? Wouldn't that be another turn or, of events? again, like, are we just reading way too much into that and, like, our just means like Rasharian people, like everyone on Rashar is, these are all our ancient enemies. This would make a lot of sense if the sleepless were bacteria, because they would oh be in gosh. everything. They would be in everything. Everyone, when they're saying are, is everyone and everything on Rashar, because that's yeah. where they are. Uh huh. <laughs> Thank you for entertaining me. I have this question then. Oh, so is it the fused? Is it the is it odium because the speaker says mm. the unmade shadows of the enemy's soul that is interesting yeah very interesting the unmade we were talking earlier about maybe like siblings that were corrupted or something right but they are saying specifically that the unmade are shadows of the enemy's soul i think right. enemy is odium. odium yeah especially since it's capital e enemy and that makes it sound more like the unmade are like splinters of odium. Yes. Maybe corrupted with an actual splinter because a splinter of a shard is a metal like tanabastium, right? Or harmonium. Yeah. There are god metals of each mm -hmm. shard. What if that's how he created the unmade? Is he took a little bit of his metal, splintered them. It doesn't always have to be metal though. Because, like, the Stormfather is a splinter of honor. Oh, definitely. I understand that. I guess I'm saying, what if this is... It just means, like, a piece of power. Definitely. I love pointing out that all of the different shards also manifest as metal. Yeah, racium. That's it, exactly. What if racium and the daggers that we've seen and the way that those are utilized to create and kill these extra powerful type two invested entities i guess it might have something to do with it just because raytheum conducts investiture so if it can help sort of channel or direct investiture into something i guess maybe that is a way that an unmade can be created i definitely think that like hemallergy there's some type of violent creation process for the unmade who are seemingly the ancient enemies of the sleepless Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. We don't know that for sure. This is just our speculation. But then they go on to say, we may soon hold surges again. Right. Now, if they were talking about the humans, that would make a lot of sense because the humans used to have surges and then they didn't. Right. But they seemingly are the sleepless, according to Brandon, who's saying this. Yeah. So then it's like, do the sleepless also manipulate surges? I mean, they seem to have their own set of powers just by virtue of being sleepless but then do they also access the surges on top of that or like did they at one point or is this again just like the royal we of like all of rashar the royal we seems to fit like that's a, a very I think good that point is we shouldn't the let that simplest go. explanation mm -hmm. 
And so again, yeah, should not be like overlooked. Occam's razor. We should probably just do the most <laughs> assume thing. that it is the royal we. But it just opens the door to some interesting questions, and I think that we can't totally put those questions to bed until we know everything. We shall not. We shan't put those to bed. <laughs> Let's continue. Quote, the captain, broken by loss, seeks reconciliation. The spy, broken by cruelty, seeks completion. The stonewalker, broken by oaths, seeks truth. The traitor, broken by ambition, seeks freedom. And finally, the king, broken by war, he seeks the past, that which was abandoned, that which he must not know, for those secrets will crush him as they did the knights who came before, end quote. Another character lineup, and this time I feel like they're getting more allegorical, metaphorical. They're really starting to stretch. I really like seeing the different uh, descriptions for each character on each book. They're really lovely. So we would think that at this point, Oathbringer, Captain Kaladin mm -hmm. is now the broken one. The spy seemingly is talking about Shallan. Mm -hmm. And the stonewalker is probably Zeth. Zeth, yep. The traitor is an interesting one. I think a new character. Venli. Ven traitor to her own people. Yes. That makes sense. Broken by her ambition to be mm. special and important. And then she is seeking freedom by becoming a will shaper. And then we have the king, broken by war, seeking his past. Interestingly, the sleepless say he cannot know, a past he cannot know, because it will break him and crush yeah. him. Do we think that's his own past about killing his wife, Evie? Right. Unclear. I feel like the first part of that broken by war, seeking the past, makes me think about his own past mm -hmm. with Evie. But then as it goes on, it sounds more like they're talking about the reveal that humans are void bringers. That definitely seems to be what they are most concerned about. But the thing that seemingly was going to be most at risk for down our breaking was his own personal past. Right. Like, and I still like don't really get the like hype around humans are void bringers. I mean, I guess no one wants to know that like their ancestors did terrible things, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel as important as like it will crush them and like turn everything to ash. Because it doesn't, you know, they're like, wow, that's a bummer. Uh, well, guess we'll move forward with that knowledge, which is the only thing you can do. And we're on such a short timeline here. We think that the last book is going to take place over 10 days leading yeah. up to the final yeah. battle. So I would suspect that maybe there is a big setup for part two or uh -huh. The second half of the Stormlight Archive, books six through ten, where maybe we do see the ramifications More, yeah. of this. Because I think, of course, the people that we experience the story through aren't showing a bunch of emotion about the Voidbringer reveal because they've got other things to deal with. There's yeah. war and I think that's why it feels anticlimactic because yes. they like get this reveal. Everyone's like, wow, that's a huge truth bomb. But then they still have to fight Odium and the Fuse later. So it doesn't really like change, change anything. anything. <laughs> yes. But I could definitely see it breaking Risharian society over a long period of time from their Yeah, I mean, it serious. already has yeah. with all of their slaves like running away and becoming the masters now. So I think that this could be an element, and I really have no idea because we haven't seen any of this. And it's unclear how it specifically affects Knights Radiant or like bonded people, which is what is specifically referenced in this blurb. The knights who came before. Exactly. And so I don't really get how that reveal affects Surge binding and radiance and all of that stuff. That's true, because I would think it would affect society more. That's kind of what right. I'm hinting at. Not yeah. the knights themselves. Like if the knights are cool yeah, with it, then, then they're like, cool with it. You know, like, this if, is supposed to be the big secret that made the knights, you know, rescind their oaths and kill all of their spren because they just couldn't handle the truth. And that just seems weird to me. Maybe that's just me, but that just like itches out my mind of like, is that really the thing? 
Or is there going to be something else later where it's like, oh, actually, the reason that the recreants happened was that, but also something that makes more sense? I think there is a connection that right now we're missing. We've seen one yeah. side of the coin and we don't know what the other is, but they go together and they cannot mm-hmm. be separated. And the concept that Maya said, you know, we chose right. this path. It wasn't something done to us makes me believe that there has to be more down that rabbit hole. Yeah, maybe going back to the concept that these Nahal bonds are not always Good. improvements mm-hmm. and that something made them realize that this was also hurting, you know, either the system or like we said for the first one, maybe corrupting the source of investiture on Rashar or something like that. And so they collaboratively decided to break the bonds. I feel like we're really getting somewhere here. I like this. Yeah, this is a great conversation. Now, some of you may be fans of Philip Pullman's The Dark His Dark Materials series, and I'm just going to offer up a fairly big spoiler. Maybe we'll do this on the book club one day. It's three books, we could do it. But The Subtle Knife has a very key power that is used throughout the story to open up a window between different worlds and you can travel between the window but what they don't realize until the third book is that there is a leaking of magic basically let's just Mm -hmm. call it investiture Mm -hmm. there's a leaking of investiture that's going out through the windows and is not going into any of the other worlds it's like disappearing into the nothingness and the whole climax of the book is about closing up all of the windows so that balance can be restored to all of the worlds that is Very interesting with everything else that we have seen here, this concept of like, you're doing something, it's giving you a great ability, but maybe there is some cost that you are unaware Mm -hmm. of a... Your carbon footprint. Oh, yeah. Your investiture footprint. (laughs) Maybe their investiture footprint is too large when they become Knights Radiant and they are draining something that is not an infinite resource, but a finite one. Right. Because if surge binding is more similar to hemallergy, then it's end negative. You're losing something. And we would have thought in neutral at best with a potential of in positive. Right. Yeah. Do you want to finish off? This is like really breaking my brain. I knew that it was going to happen because these are all so new to us. So we've never had this conversation before. (laughs) Normally, everyone, we've had all the conversations before. (laughs) We've talked about these things off mic for hours upon hours. And then we're like, maybe we should do an episode about that. This time, we didn't know. And so it's just hitting us all fresh. And this is how we're starting out 2022. Just taking fresh shots. Boom, 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 boom. Shall we do the last one? We shall. Rhythm of War, book back blurb. Quote, There are secrets we have kept for so long, watching, sleepless, eternal, and soon they will no longer be ours. Let's pause right there with an end quote. Uh, what secrets are they talking about? Like, did they know about anti-investiture or about Spren being Fabrials? I feel like those are the two big, like, reveals or secrets that are discovered in Rhythm of War. We also have to recognize that a Dawn Shard was picked up between Oathbringer and Rhythm of War. True, 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 true. That's a great point. And the Mm. novella Dawn Shard. Yep. That's a a big secret that they were keeping that has not been revealed, but has been discovered by, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever, one person. From their perspective, it's been revealed. Big breach. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) Like it's out. The castle has been breached. (laughs) So that could be an aspect of their secret that they were keeping and let's go on because yeah this just gets more and more interesting quote the one who is three seeks the captured soul but does not know it the imprisoned spren so long ago forgotten can she free her own soul in time to find knowledge the knowledge that damns all people of rashar end quote holy moly wake up kids Because this is where things get very, very interesting. What? We are talking about Ba'ed Omishram. On the back of the book. Okay. The one who is imprisoned. Remember what the the imprisoned Spren? Yes. Ba'ed Omishram is the one that Kalek begs to free, right? Who says, like, I feel like we've made Uh a terrible mistake. 
trapping that it's like it's it has impacts that okay, we don't know. Okay, but Shalon like doesn't do anything with Baido Mishram in Rhythm of War. But she definitely could be that could be her setup for where she is going. I know, but this is specifically about Rhythm of War. It's written So I'm thinking I mean it does make her journey in Rhythm of War seem much more important than I previously thought because I was just thinking of it as like Shalon discovers her old spren. But this sound like what is the captured soul? Is that the spren? Like is the captured soul the same thing as the imprisoned spren that's referenced so. in the next sentence? I think so. So the one who is 3, that's Shalon. Yeah. Seeks the captured soul, Ba'edo Mishram, but does not know it. She doesn't know what she's doing. Oh. See, I don't think this has I think you're you're way off the deep end. This is not about really? Ba'edo Mishram. Oh, people. This is about testament. Okay. So <laughs> She <laughs> seeks the captured soul testament, yeah. but does not know it. That's good. I like it. The imprisoned spren so long ago forgotten. Testament. Totally fine. Yeah. Can she free her own soul in time to find knowledge? The knowledge that damns all people of Rashar. That's damns as in the curse, not as in the infrastructure that yeah. like blocks water. Yeah, yeah. So I think testament works. I'm not saying that testament doesn't fit, but the idea of knowledge that damns all people of Rashar, to me, is pointing at Ba'edo Mishram and that weird aspect of like, we've done something terribly wrong by imprisoning Ba'edo Mishram. But that's not Shalon's story. Like, that's Kalek's story. So that doesn't make any sense in context of Shalon. Shalon's story is about testament and finding out that the Spren chose to break the bonds as well. And that could be damning to the people of Rashar. I understand that. I think this is... I mean, this is just like a huge question mark for me. I don't know what any of these words mean. I'm like, what is the captured soul? How, why does Shalon not know it? What is the imprisoned spren? Is that a reference to Fabrials? Or is it just like bonded spren? Oh, this is an interesting question. Is Testament female? Yes. I believe she's referenced as female. Okay. Because... The third sentence says, can she, I believe in reference to the imprisoned spren, oh, free her own soul Aww. in time to find knowledge. So can Testament free her own soul in time to find, to find what knowledge? knowledge? The knowledge that damns all the people of Rashar. I know, but what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have answers for you people. We're just playing fast and loose with this. Like maybe... I, I feel like, am I forgetting something about Shalon's story in Rhythm of War? I read this and I've read Rhythm of War twice already and I feel like I have no idea what happened. I'm just yeah. like... What, what Was there a book at all? What is this <laughs> yeah, referencing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So listeners, tell us if we're missing something here about Shalon and her journey in Rhythm of War and all of these words that we've just read. Preferably... Tell me all of the reasons why I am right. Because <laughs> I think that's what everybody wants in their life. There are a few, like, very big fans of you, Tyler. <gasps> really? Yeah. I Out in the audience, all of the fans were People your find fans. you very amusing. Well, I'm going to be honest. I am a bigger fan of you than everyone else. So <laughs> let's go on to the next section. Quote, the fallen soldier caresses and loves the spear even as it gouges his own flesh. He steps ever forward, ever into the darkness, without light. He can bring none with him, but that which he can kindle himself. The broken sister sees her mistakes and thinks she is one herself. She seems so far from her ancestors, but does not realize they carry her upon their shoulders, toward victory and toward the most important silence. End quote. Now, fallen soldier... Kaladin. Obviously Spear. Kaladin. Mm -hmm. Broken sister, Venli. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Now, yeah, so we've got Venli again in the mix here. Makes sense being that she is such a focus of Rhythm of War. Kaladin's fairly straightforward, but I yeah. do like this concept of ever into darkness without light can bring none with him except that which he kindles himself. To me, that sounds very much like his experience in the nightmare world right. with mm -hmm odium's manipulation yeah and needing hoyd to maybe give him a little flint 
or something so that then he can kindle some uh, flames himself. I think that that is the the point, though. Like, yeah, Hoyd doesn't give him the light. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, Hoyd, like, provides a space for Kaladin to kindle his own light. You know, Hoyd, we just read that story. Hoyd ends the story on a downer note. And Kaladin has to be the one to say, no, that's not right. Mm -hmm. You know, that dog was I'm gonna kindle amazing. This right that here. dog was a hero. I'm amazing. Exactly. I'm a hero. Yes. <laughs> and then we go to the broken sister. Seeing her mistakes, definitely Venley's story from Rhythm of War, thinks she is a mistake herself. So far from her ancestors, not caring because... I think it's just like she is the natural progression of... A people like there's going to be some peaks and valleys and sometimes terrible things happen on the road to progress and so although she feels isolated and like she is a step back she is actually propelling them forward but that line ends with venley and her ancestors moving forward towards the most important silence what do you yeah. think that is what the heck is that most important silence Huh? Right there. That was the most important <laughs> silence. As we ponder. I have no idea. I have no theories. I present you nothing. Yeah, I award you no question. points. Let's finish this. Quote, And the mother of machines, most important of them all, dances with liars at a grand ball. She must unmask them, find their hidden truths, and present them to the world. She must admit that the worst lies have been the ones she tells herself. If she does, our secrets will finally become truths instead. End quote. Woo! Navane! Mother the of The most machines. important of them all. She has the coolest name the coolest of The coolest name. Now, a bunch of interesting stuff about Navani. She must unmask them, find their hidden truths, and present them to the world. Okay. She definitely is doing some of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that this secret that she unmasks that then becomes a truth is the secret of anti-investiture. I feel like that's the biggest reveal that comes out of Navani's story, the most significant one. And so therefore that must be the secret that the sleepless have been trying to keep. Can I push back just a little bit though? Sure. Yeah. Because anti-investiture is yes, very important, but what about just like the rhythm of war? Because that's just war light. Uh -huh. That's just regular investiture. There would seemingly be anti-investiture to Warlight as there is yeah. that can interact oh, with Oh, you think that the, blending the secret of is the emulsifier. Yes, exactly. Oh, And okay. we previously talked, did a whole episode about the emulsifiers. I think that anti-investiture is huge and clearly was the thing that like Gavilar yeah, I mean, was working on. And that's the thing. Like that's the thing that can kill shards. Presumably. I just like the idea that blending is more important than destroying. <laughs> I do like that idea better. But once again, we are left with the line, if she does, our secrets will finally become truths instead. Ours being the I sleepless. think that is, yeah, the secrets of the sleepless. So that's not the royal we anymore. We've now left right. the royal we behind. And now when they say ours, they mean yeah. we sleepless. I think in these passages, it is bopping back and forth a lot from oh, the royal we to the more personal we. And so it's going to be like years probably until we can come back to these and be like oh this means the sleepless and this means rashar and this means xyz now the big reveal would be that if in reality every single line was perfect grammatically and brandon was just messing us with the oh entire <laughs> time it was just like all you had to do is read it appropriately <laughs> there's no confusion here whatsoever these are all perfect and i have no idea if that's correct because i don't understand grammar kids that's why i host a podcast only talking only talking you can do whatever you want you use grammar in your speech um i don't know about that that sounds <laughs> like a, that sounds like a real smart brain type of thing <laughs> a recap of characters listed we've got shalon We've got Kaladin, we've got Venli, we've got Navani. So a whole different set of four than from the beginning, which is also interesting because in general, throughout these four blurbs, the the core four 
have remained with some newbies in there each time, you know, the uh, mm-hmm. the guest star, so to speak. But the cast is always there. The exactly. Core yeah. Except for this last one, which is 50 percent different. Like not even, you know, Dalinar doesn't even get an honorable mention. Like exactly. Dalinar is not even in it. Too. Exactly. So I think that's very interesting. And again, I just keep coming back to that first one from Way of Kings going, well, these have been very clearly established as the core four. I don't know what that means, but I find it interesting. And maybe it is like you said with the Words of Radiance blurb that things have just changed as time has gone on. And so Brandon started with one idea and it just hasn't panned out exactly the way that he originally planned 10 years ago. Totally fine. And so like maybe these blurbs are not going to age well. I think they're aging just fine right now. I'm feeling pretty good about them. There are so many different questions. Of course, we don't have the answer to, but it's slowly being revealed. The picture is slowly becoming more clear over a long period of time. I am wondering, when are these written? Like in yes. the time frame, in, in the timeline, when exactly are these written? Because if it's an in-world document that there is some right. sleepless out there who's carving this into little, <laughs> you know, pen and parchment. He's just working his little... I was going to say, you think they're like pounding it into a rock? Well, it, they would have to if they were on Skadriel because metal is the only way that something can make it through. But... Maybe they're just working their little Kremlings to jot down stuff. Maybe they don't have to write. Maybe they have developed some more advanced yeah. type of communication. Okay, but I think that's a great question. Like, are is each blurb being written concurrent to the action of that book? Mm-hmm. That would be very important to know. Or are they all being written at the same time? Mm-hmm. Are they being written before the events of the book or after the events of the book in like retrospect? Is it a kind of Taravangian like thing of seeing right. the far future? Uh-huh. And totally. These were all written, you know, in the past and they're like, we're seeing eventually yeah. these four. That's a great question. I saw someone on the internet mention that. Like, if this is the sleepless seeing the future and we are supposed to not trust anyone who can see the future. And we can't trust these. Then, yeah, like, what does that mean? Are these, then like, are these blurbs even real? And we don't really know anything about the sleepless And any potential ability to see the future or not. So, question mark. I do think that what we got, barely, what we got from the Stone Wards and a little bit from the Willshapers sharing that power, that there's some aspect of the stone that can understand Mm -hmm. the past, which will then help them understand the future. There's something going on there. Maybe. Yeah. And maybe that's what the sleepless are able to do. We've been around for so long Mm -hmm. that we have a very good guess about what's going to happen next. That's a great call. I like that. Let us know if you have any great calls, any great theories about the book back blurbs. Definitely. This has been enlightening. I, I hope it's been just as good for our listeners. We need some help understanding things. So you can find us on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook. We also have two posts up on our Facebook page and then in our Facebook discussion group as well. There's a post on each of those places asking for your episode recommendations. We often get communication with people saying, hey, you know what would be a great episode? X, Y, Z thing. And all of those ideas are like scattered across all of the various methods of communication. And so this is a singular place for those things to gather. So if you have an idea about an episode you'd like to hear, go to one of those pages and please give us your episode recommendations. If you want some bonus material, bonus episodes, including joining the book club, all possible on our Patreon. This episode has been so much fun. Thank you so much for listening. We hope that you will stay with us throughout 2022 as we make our way through another Cosmere drought. But each time something happens, each time we learn something new, we will be right here talking about it. Until next time, life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination. 